In this video, we take a look at component placement, hole drilling, and we get started wiring the panel. And that's coming up next. The Control Panel Build Series brought to you in part by Electric Brewing Supply, supplier of turnkey control panels, complete DIY kits, as well as individual parts and components for your electric brewing needs. Use the link in the description below or visit them at ebrewsupply.com. How's it going? My name's Brian. I'd like to welcome you to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, DIY projects just like this one, and other home brewing related stuff, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Click the bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. Since this is the first video in the series, there's a few things that I wanted to cover before we get started actually doing any of the wiring on the panel. One of those things is panel uh, design and component placement. Electric Brewing Supply does offer panels that are pre-cut and they have a design that is made so that all of the components fit well with each other, both in the door as well as inside of the panel itself. If you do decide that you're going to get a panel that is uncut and make your own design, one of the things you want to be cautious of is to make sure that all of your components fit with each other. Some of the relays are very tall and the PIDs are pretty long, so you want to make sure that those are not hitting each other in your design. I would suggest that if you're going to do your own design that you lay it out on a piece of paper, lay it over top of your control panel, make sure that all of your components inside are free and clear of the PIDs and switches on the outside. Uh, as far as cutting the control panel, there are some drill bit sizes that are recommended and I'll leave all that information down in the description below. And I'll also leave some recommendations for tools that Electric Brewing Supply recommends you use to drill those holes and cut those different parts of the panel. In planning this video series, I did talk to Ryan over at Electric Brewing Supply and he gave me a couple recommendations and I'm going to follow those throughout this series. One of those things is that in the first part of the build, you take the back panel or the bottom plate out of your control panel, put all of the components on that and pre-wire that so that everything is accessible and easily wired. And then once you're done with that, you put the plate back inside of the panel and then make your connections from there. So we're gonna follow that process. I also wanted to let you know that I will be posting in the corner of the video what page I am using for the particular process that I'm on so you can follow along in your workbook. And I'll also try to explain and show different routing of the wires and point out some things that may or may not be obvious along the way. So stay tuned, let's get started. As previously stated, one of the first things that you're gonna to wanna to do is take the back panel out of your control panel. And to do that, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter wrench or a 13 millimeter socket with a ratchet. After you've done that, I would suggest laying all of your components out in a nice orderly fashion. This entire build could be overwhelming if you have all of your components laid out on the table all at once. I would suggest that you only take out the components that you need at that particular point of your build process so that you don't have a bunch of parts laying around everywhere, stuff to get lost or you know confuse you with something else. So uh, I've laid out all of the components in all of the areas of the panel that they are supposed to go in. And then one by one, we'll begin snapping in all those components. I'm starting in the upper right corner, working my way around in a counterclockwise fashion. And the components are pretty easy to snap in. If you do snap them in, you'll have to put in one end first into the, the rail and then you'll snap the other one in. The black components of the control panel, they are stops that keep the components from sliding around on the rails. They have metal components that actually bite into the rail. Those stops are used in between some of the components and they make spaces as well as keep things from sliding around. The relays and fuses, those all have clips in them in the bottom that will allow you to unclip them and clip them back in to be able to slide them around, move them around, remove them from the rail. If you happen to put something in the incorrect place, all you need to do is simply take a screwdriver, stick it down in the slot and push out on it and that will release it from the rail and allow you to move it in whatever fashion you want. One thing that is very important that I wanna emphasize about putting the blocks on is there is these exposed connectors here and they need to be capped off and the kit comes with caps and those things need to be put on the ends. Anywhere that you end a row of blocks you're gonna be using for a particular connection. So those need to be installed and that will protect you from having shorts as well. Once you've got all your components in place, it's time to begin wiring. Another thing that I wanted to cover with you is when you put your control panel together, take a little bit of time and effort in making sure that the wires are as straight 
as possible. I am using a pair of pliers to bend the wires in, 90, in a 90 degree fashion. You simply measure roughly with your finger where the 90 degree angle will go, bend it, and then that will allow you to route the wires in an orderly fashion. And this is not only aesthetically pleasing, but as well as if you have an issue and you need to trace wires back to their origin or back to a component, they're much easier whenever they're laid out in an orderly fashion. One important thing about using the pliers to twist the wire, I generally only use that on the larger gauge wires and I don't like really squeeze down on it and leave any marks. Be very careful when you're doing that because you can damage the wire inside. I will continue wiring and I'll be back to discuss the results once I'm completed with the wiring. All right, so we've completed our wiring on the 220 volt section of the base plate here for the most part. There's a couple of other little items that we'll have to do, but uh, we've got the two relays for the HLT and the boil kettle. We've got the two fuses uh, for the same, the HLT and the boil kettle. We've got the main power relay, and then we've got the junction blocks. These loose wires will go to the HLT and the boil receptacles, the twist lock receptacles in the bottom. And then these two wires up here, these will actually go to the SSRs up in the top of the panel as well. So the power will flow through the fuses into the SSRs, then into the relays. These relays will be controlled by the switches that are in the main control panel. And then there are a couple of wires that connect from these two junction blocks to the lights in the front door of the panel, but I'm gonna leave those lower voltage wires out until we get this back into the into the actual box itself and wire those up then because I need to know exactly how long those are and I don't want to leave a bunch of wire hanging out. These are these are enough as it is, but those are necessary. So so one other thing we do need to install are some of these bus bars. And the way that that works is these connectors actually have a metal plate inside and these bus bars will sit down inside of there and actually make connections. So what that will allow you to do is that will allow you to make a connection to multiple outlets on one side by connecting one wire on one side. This side over here, same thing with that, it allows the main power to be connected to these three terminals over here. So we'll go ahead and do that. And the terminals over here require five. So we'll get one, two, three, four, five. You can actually take these and kind of bend them in the middle a little bit there and then cut them with your wire cutters and then uh, you want to trim off the end so that it's as, as flush as possible there on both of those and what you do there are some pieces that come in the kit itself and they're like little spacer blocks or little protection blocks so what you can do is you're going to stick that in the 
in between those there and slide it all the way down and what that will do is that will allow you to prevent these two from touching each other and shorting out so you just drop those in and when you get them in there then you put the provided screws in and that will make the connections the main power block gets three and two respectively for its connections one of the things you can do if you can't get this really really close here put those turn those so that they're sticking out away from the spacer in the center so you got three there two there so we'll put this three here two here and the screws tighten those down so that you make the connection and you are ready to go. Thank you so much for watching this segment of the control panel build. I really have to say thanks to Ryan and Katie Gray from Electric Brewing Supply for making this possible and allowing me to bring this content to you and help you with some of your questions and other issues that you might have in building your control panel. As always, please leave a comment down below if there's any particular questions that you have regarding the content. If there's a question about some process or procedure that I did, please let me know so that I can try to clarify that for you. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers, and we will see you on the next video.